Becky and today I'm going to be reviewing No Good Deed by Cara Connolly. No Good Deed is a Robin Hood retelling with a time travel twist. It follows Ellie Hudson who is a world class champion in archery in present day. She goes over to Nottingham for a final and she is taken back in time by a mysterious monk. Who she tries following. She then turns up in the middle of a castle in the Middle Ages and then she finds out this is actually in Nottingham in the near Sherwood Forest and she's around the time of the famous Robin Hood who is also famous for his archery. She meets her band of merry men soon enough. She has many different adventures to try and help get back to the present day. I think No Good Deed is a really good take on the Robin Hood story. I don't really read many retellings of this book but I did really enjoy this one. It has this time travel element which is very outlander but a lot less Scottish and a lot less sexy and this is because it's a YA book obviously but I did really enjoy this aspect of it as it's a very unique take. However there were a couple of things that really bothered me and just really irritated me about the book which kind of lessened my enjoyment but as a whole I did like the book. The thing I liked about this retelling is that it kind of plays on the historical element of Robin Hood. We don't quite know if Robin Hood is real or not, he's kind of a myth and a legend in the UK. However, we do find out that Robin Hood is in fact a female and has just been mistaken because of some confusion around the Middle Ages. It also, the, it also talks a lot about how stories are passed on and altered and exaggerated. I really enjoyed this element of it as we kind of understand that Robin Hood is an exaggerated story for the dramatisation. First off, let's talk about our main character, Ellie. I did not like Ellie. She just wasn't interesting to me. She wasn't Robin Hood and I felt like she was a very plain normal YA female character. She had a tragic backstory where her brother was actually missing. She is very talented with bow and arrow and she has multiple men falling over her I guess. She kind of stumbles upon the time travel hole. This part is never really explained at all and we don't know whether she was meant to go back in time or not and whether the person she followed was trying to get her to follow them or not. Because of this I found it really strange that the book was centred or around her because a lot of the things that happened weren't from her actions. She was just kind of going through the routine and things kept happening to her. So she just decided to wander down a hole and she was time travelled and then she was picked up by a handsome knight who was going to help her and then she was, because she was put in the castle, she was the enemy but actually she wasn't really an enemy because there was really no reason for her to be in the first place and all these things just added up and as a whole she wasn't a very strong character. Speaking of other characters though, you can't really have a Robin Hood tale without Little John, Friar Tuck, Will Scarlet and of course Maid Marian. Similar to our main character, their roles are subverted quite a bit, um, they're not exactly what you expect them to be. Maid Marian is not the love interest of Robin Hood because Robin Hood is a female now. And so this is a bit different. I think it would have actually may have been more fun if Maid Marian and Robin Hood as a female were love interests, but that's not the case. These characters are very stereotypical in some ways. We have the kind of serious knight, we have the lovely female friend who helps things out, and we have the comic relief. Like I said before, these characters kind of talk about the exaggeration and the dramatisation of these stories over time and between word of mouth, which was in the Middle Ages was a main thing, which is why we can't quite tell if Robin Hood is real or not. There is also a kind of a subplot about Ellie's missing brother. This isn't touched upon at all, really. Uh, there's nothing in the story which really talks about how she brings, how she finds him or how he would come back into the life. And so... It's kind of a backstory that's touched on a little bit too often with very little payoff. I was kind of expecting her brother to turn up in the past because he's also time travelled but he's got stuck. This wasn't the case unfortunately. And then yeah, I felt like this was, it was emphasised too much to not be used and I didn't enjoy that. The story as a whole was really fast paced. I really enjoyed reading it because it was so quick to read. and. Even in the kind of slowed down portions where it was kind of quiet, you kind of knew what was happening next and so you wanted to read more and more. Robin Hood and her band of merry men 
were always up to something. They always had a plan. They always knew they needed to do X, Y, or Z in order to get ahead. They were trying to help the poor, but they were also trying to inadvertently get Ellie home. And so this was really interesting to read because you kind of didn't know what you wanted. You didn't know whether you wanted Ellie to stay with her merry men or whether she wanted to go home. And she didn't know what she wanted either, I think. And I think that's one of the greatest things about this book is that the motivations behind the characters are so very different, but also the same as the original story. Although in Ellie's world, Robin Hood is a historical figure. So I do think her actions were actually based on the assumption that she needs to be this historical figure in order to keep the timeline the same, which I found really weird because the element of time travel is so not focused on that I was just questioning if Ellie decided to completely change the timeline, what would happen if she decided that she didn't like it? How would she be able to go back in time again? And kind of these kinds of things. And I just, I feel like for a time travel book, it was really not touched upon. It just felt like a very big gimmick at the beginning and the end to create a Robin Hood retelling where the main character is a American female teenager. And I guess that's another reason why I didn't enjoy the book. I didn't enjoy that Robin Hood, who is kind of a British myth that was turned into an American teenager. I found this really awkward. I just, I didn't enjoy it. I found that it didn't need to be an American. I don't even know why they were Nottingham in the first place. Like it's not a big tourist city for Americans. I grew up near there. It's not a great place to go on holiday. It's pretty much always raining and it's really gray and yeah, I wouldn't go there as a tourist, so I'm not quite sure why Ellie and her family would have been there and why it ha they had to be American in order to be there. It's not a completely large part of the plot that she's American, but it was just stuck in the back of my mind that she was and it made no sense to the book because it could have just been a random English person who's from Nottingham who's good at archery, went back in time and became Robin Hood. Um, on top of this, the world building wasn't great. Nottingham is Nottingham. To me, I know what Nottingham looks like, which isn't what is described in the present day version of it. Definitely wasn't what it was described in the middle age version of it, obviously. However, if I was reading this and I didn't know anything about Nottingham, and I didn't know anything about Robin Hood, I hadn't seen adaptions of it before, I would not know what this place looked like. Like, there's no world building about what the, what the places they are in. It leans so heavily on the story of Robin Hood and the basis that the person reading it has already read or seen an adaption of it, that it doesn't do any world building of its own. I think because of this, the book felt very character driven. We were focused on Ellie and Little John and Friar Tuck and Will Scarlet and made Marion a lot, which is good in some aspects, but at the same time, like when we had a main character that I didn't connect with, it just wasn't helping. And although I was curious as to see where the story went, it would have been better if there was a little bit more world building, a little bit more magic, a little bit more emphasis on the time travel. Um, all these little bits kind of added up as a whole thing was missing, uh, which could have made this book a lot better than it was. I think this is especially saddening for Nottingham Forest. We don't really know anything about Nottingham Forest, apart from it's a forest. And I think that half that forest being such a key part of the Robin Hood tale meant that it really missed out when we were talking about it the expectations on the Robin Hood story was telling me. So yeah, when the cave scene happened where they're all hiding out in a cave in the woods, I just couldn't imagine it because I was imagining like, oh, it's on a good vantage point, it's above everything else, it must be on a huge hill. But because I've been to Nottingham, I know it's not very hilly, it's still quite flat, similar to where I grew up. So it wasn't really clicking as to whether this was actual world building or whether it was kind of assumed it was looked like that. The good thing about this retelling is that it does have a really good ending. It obviously has a happy ending like all fairy tale stories, but it was very tied up in a neat bow. 
I really enjoyed that all the questions were kind of answered apart from the time travel bit that wasn't answered. We find out that all the different characters have their happy ending. We find out what happened to each of them. Um, obviously for some of them it's an assumed knowledge but for our main characters at least we definitely know what happened. And I really enjoyed that it was tied up in this neat bow so that we understand that it was a happy ending for all parties involved and not just our main character. Overall I really enjoyed kind of the actual story of it. I enjoyed the ending and I really enjoyed the, the Merry Men characters who kind of brought individual aspects from each of them into the story which I enjoyed for comic relief or for drama or for tension but there were aspects that I thought were lacking such as the world building and the main character and these didn't make it a bad book I really enjoyed my read I read it in a few days however it was missing that little something to make it a great book. Thank you for watching and I hope to see you again soon.